Okay. Okay. So I'm going to turn the time over to Monica for our program today. Thank you, Jenny Starr. We are about to go on a magical journey together, everybody. Lydia. No, I can't see anything. Um, let me just open this bad boy up just a second. And just one little housekeeping thing while she's getting set up. If you are not speaking, if you don't mind muting your microphone, it just matters with background noise. Sometimes the microphones will pick it up. Um, but as always, if you have questions, we want you to feel free. Like you can unmute at any time and ask questions. So for sure. Thanks. So as I was saying, everyone, join me on a magical journey through the wild, wonderful world of Dill. So this is gonna, we're gonna be kicking off the see the table concept that we're trying out that we were talking about a couple weeks ago. And this is not like exclusively what we're gonna be doing at all. Um, you know, every single Friday, well, except for today, but um, we have been thinking that it would be cool if we all sort of picked a crop or an herb and grow them together. And then each week we can kind of, you know, update each other, troubleshoot, check in, see what the next step is. And then ultimately we're hoping to do like some kind of recipe, some recipe demonstrations using the dill from our garden. So Amy and I, we're here at the Ruiz um, library today and they've got a really cute little herb garden in the back. So I'm gonna talk to you about some fun facts about dill, some of the history of dill. And then I'm gonna turn the computer around and Amy's gonna plant some of the seeds for us. So a world beyond pickles. So dill, it's a member of the celery family. So it's kind of closely related to celery, carrots, um, the leaves, both the leaves and the seeds are really commonly used as an herb to flavor foods. And it's most common in like Eastern European, Nordic and Asian cuisine. But then we also find it, you know, in some kind of more Americanized dishes like potato salad, stuff like that. But that's where it's kind of um, origin is from and where it has been the most widely used for a long time. It's got kind of a sweet, fresh, grassy flavor. If you've never had it before, um, it doesn't taste anything like pickles. So if you don't like pickles, this is a safe space for you. It's okay. Um, but it just kind of adds a nice little like fresh pop to, to different foods, just like most herbs do. Um, and always, you know, if you're trying to cut back on your sodium, uh, fresh herbs like dill, Adding those to your dishes, especially at the end, can be a really way, a really good way to compensate for some of that flavor when you're trying to reduce the amount of salt that you're using. Some common uses, so I sort of just like picked a random country from each of those reasons, uh, regions that I mentioned. Um, in Russia, it's often used for as a flavoring for sauces, as a topping for soups, fish, boiled potatoes with butter and dill. That sounds amazing right now. Um, cucumber and veggie dishes, and also it's really common to use it with boiled eggs. It's especially popular during hot weather. In Norway, our friends to the super north, again with like baked or boiled fish, and fermented pickled vegetables, cured fish and meats, and again like in sauces, salads and soups. Both in Russia and Norway, they tend to mix it a lot with like dairy heavy items. I was reading Russia has got, um, it's a fermented yogurt or fermented milk drink that they, they drink a lot during the, during, Amy's making a face. <laughs> I guess I won't be making her one of those. Um, that they like to mix with dill because it just kind of feels like cooling properties, but I like a lot of dips, creamy soups, stuff like that. It seems like it makes its way into those, especially in those two cultures. In China, this was really interesting for me to read about because I knew about it's kind of like European uses, but in China and also in India, parts of Thailand, it's pretty common to find um, to find dill in their cuisine, but it's a common filling for steamed buns. It's used like actually as a vegetable in some rice noodle dishes. So instead of like chopping it up really finely, they kind of cut up the the whole frond and just toss it in there like a vegetable. 
and also use that same way as part of a salad. And you're often going to find it paired with papaya, which I think also sounds really nice. I would be very game for trying a papaya and dill salad. And there's, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg. It was, you know, really interesting. Of course, Wikipedia will take you down a crazy rabbit hole when you're reading about anything, but. Well, and not to interrupt you, but um, we have A to Z World Foods database at the library. Oh, that's right. And what I'll do is I'll get on there for next week and I'll pull up, you can look up by ingredient. And so I'll pull up the page for all the things that have to look Good idea, Jenny Star. So some common, at least to us here in the United States uses where we're most likely to have encountered dill in our past. Uh, cured salmon, AKA lox, I think is a super common one. And that's got those kind of um, both Eastern European and Scandinavian origins. Um, borscht, um, that's really common in like Poland, Russia, that Eastern European area. And it's a beet soup that's actually sort of cold with a little bit of cream and dill on top. I love it. My husband hates it, but I am very, very pro borscht. Um, dill potato salad, I think, is something that we see a lot too. Um, the dill and cucumber salad, maybe with, um, you know, some other stuff like tomatoes, like real summery vegetables, and also lots of creamy, creamy dressings and dips. So kind of like the other, other cultures, you see it pop up a little bit more when we're thinking about warm weather foods, I feel like. So that's, that's a beautiful thing that we all share. Growing dill. So um, dill does prefer warmer conditions. It can grow in warm to hot summers. They do prefer as much sun as possible. So full sun would be ideal. Um, definitely, I would not say even as far as like partial shade, it's gonna need that full, like at least eight hours of sun every day if you want it to really flourish. It prefers rich, well-draining soil, which who doesn't? But um, you know, dill, dill especially enjoys it. Um, it will bolt, which is when um, the tops shoot out and it makes flowers. And then that's what actually produces the seeds that are also edible and they're super easy to collect. And that will start to happen, um, especially when it gets really warm outside. If that's happening before it gets super warm out, you can actually trim it back. And then that will help kind of like preserve the, cause it'll get a little bitter, just like most things will when they bolt. So that can help kind of um, stave that off for a little bit longer. Um, it also, and Amy was just telling me this, that it does produce a really, really long kind of deep root system. So you, it's not something you necessarily want to plant in like a shallow little like container on your porch. You want to have something that, I mean, what do you think, Amy, at least like a foot deep more than that? Uh, I would say the top, but I have mine in a home with about 24 inches. Oh, wow. Okay. Have a long taproot on it. So Amy has got it in a 24 inch deep pot um, for that long tap root. But I wouldn't, if you don't have that, I wouldn't let that stop you from putting it in a little pot either because you're still going to be able to harvest some of it. Um, it's just not going to be able to get really big, which if you're growing it like in your kitchen or on your porch, you probably don't want it to do that anyways. Um, so don't let that, that discourage you. Planting dill seeds. So you want to sow the seeds within their row about a quarter of an inch deep and 18 inches apart. Um, after about 10 to 14 days, you're going to want to thin those seedlings as needed. So if you didn't like carefully measure out or if you wanted to kind of be safe and put a couple seeds in each spot, which is what I usually like to do, put like two or three seeds in each hole. Um, after you start getting those, those second sets of leaves on it, then you wanna thin those seedlings out so that they are um, 18 inches apart. They need a little bit warmer soil, or soil temperatures for them to germinate um, like quickly and well. So soil temps, you wanna have at least like 60 to 70 degrees. There are some stuff that you, some things that you wanna avoid planting dill near and cilantro is one, carrots, peppers, potatoes, eggplants, and lavender. 
carrots, I think the main reason that you may not want to plant them next to each other is they can um, crossbreed. Um, so if you, you know, if you're not planning on saving your seeds, then that's something you don't really even need to worry about. Like they're not going to affect the taste of either crop. They're not going to affect their ability to grow well. Um, however, with peppers, potatoes, eggplants, kind of those things that are in that nightshade family, I think with these, the main um, kind of drawback of planting dill nearby is those um, dill can attract certain insects that are bad for those nightshade plants. Um, if that makes sense, I sure hope it does. Uh, overall though, dill attracts a lot of beneficial bugs, especially pollinators. Um, what are butterflies called before they're butterflies? Caterpillars, caterpillars love them. Um, some, pla some people plant dill and I think parsley is another one. Like as part of pollinator gardens because it attracts them so much. And bees, all of those helpful little dudes that we really want in our garden. And it also discourages the presence of some harmful bugs like cabbage loopers and spider mites, which are both known to drive gardeners cuckoo every summer, especially those cabbage loopers can really be a complete nightmare. So definitely got some really good benefits besides being something tasty for you to um, put in your, your milk, <laughs> your ferments and milk on a hot day. Yikes. <laughs> so we're gonna have Amy, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna flip this around and get Amy in the frame. Let's scoot this up. I'll go ahead and spotlight her so that it's bigger for everyone. There she is. Hi, a can you guys see that okay? Because it's hard for me to see what you can see. Yes, we can see. Okay. So we've already got our lovely, well draining, fertile soil kind of uh, loosened up back here so that it's ready for us to. Um, space those rows 18 inches apart. So Amy's going to do one or two rows today. Um, she's got her little dill seeds. What's your approach, Amy? Do you like to count them now or do you like to not count them now and thin later? What I tend to do is um, I do what you do. I'll put like two to three seeds mm -hmm. in each hole. Yeah. And then depending on how many of those come up, I might have to thin a little bit. Right. But I'm definitely not going to just spread it all over the place because sure. then I'm definitely going to have to thin most of yes. the plants. And they won't be in nice rows. Right. And then I've just wasted seed. Yeah. And we do that two to three seeds per row. It's kind of an insurance policy mm -hmm. so that you don't kind of have your eggs all in one basket. You'll have better odds that something's going to germinate again. Yeah. But if you want to come back out in a couple of weeks and do another little row, mm -hmm. and then in a couple of weeks and do another little row, then you'll end up having dill yeah. all summer long. That's a great idea. So you can continue to put some out mm -hmm. throughout the summer. You cool. don't have to just do it right now. And I always forget that like succession planting is a good idea. It's not mm -hmm. something I do, but yeah, maybe, maybe this going. is my year. <laughs> so it's really very simple. I'm just going to put right there and then what I'm going to do I'm just going to barely cover the soil literally barely cover the soil mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put a marker right here that way I know mm -hmm. where my dill actually is and I know when it starts coming up that it's actually dill coming up there because when it comes up in the very beginning if you can kind of be tricked sometime and think it's a weed coming up. It's hard to tell what's going on when everything is really small. Yeah, but it's not a weed, so it's really important to mark it. And I also stress, I'm not doing this right now, but I also stress marking what's putting on your marker, what you're planting, right. and the date. And that way you oh. can kind of keep track of that. Because still should take, oh, about 10 days or so to yeah. germinate. 
Um, so if you have that date on there, you're kind of watching and you know when it should be coming up. No, and you need to cut your losses if they're not germinating. Right. That's put smart, Amy. I've out. never put dates on it, but I love that idea. Yeah. And I yeah. also recommend that you write things down because you think you're going to remember them and you're not. Oh, I don't think that. So, I just write it down. I don't even give myself the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. But if your markers are gone, that's a good backup plan so you can know right. exactly where you planted things at, especially if you're planting multiple things. We have a spreadsheet because we're a family of data scientist nerds. Uh -huh. So everything goes in a spreadsheet, including our garden plans. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. So now we don't want it really close because this is gonna end up blooming pretty big. So we're going to estimate about 18 inches. So I'm going to put another one about right here. And I get in, I'm just going to put like two or three seeds in there, barely cover it up, and then get my marker here. And that's pretty much it. She makes it look easy, folks. And that's because it is easy. <laughs> Not that you aren't a highly skilled dill farmer but then, i guess i'm gonna give it just a tiny bit of water yeah a little water especially because it's gonna probably rain some more yeah, but i'm gonna give it a lot but just a little bit just to get it going still mm -hmm. likes when it's trying to germinate it likes for the soil to be a little bit moist mm -hmm. but not wet sure so just make sure you just give it a little and Yay. then we'll just let the the sun and the moisture do its thing and in about 10 days mm -hmm. it should start coming up you'll see a couple of little leaves shoot up first and then the second set of leaves that come in that's when you can really tell it looks more like a dill plant mm -hmm. it'll but, kind of have that ferny exactly. looking edge instead of just the straight leaves exactly but again, that's why it's important to have these markers here so you know where you planted it because with dill, if you don't know where you're planting it and you look at it in 10 days, you're just going to think it's a weed growing there until you get that second set of right. leaves and you're going to want to pull it and then right. you've defeated your purpose. So. That's right. Well, now the party is really getting started, Amy. Thank you. Yep. So we'll be watching this over the next several days to... Yeah see what happens with it. I'll come out here and make sure that it gets watered and we'll see if we're successful or not. And we'll keep everybody posted. We'll probably give some weekly updates. We also yeah. have the, what did we end up naming that Facebook group, Jenny? Um, right now, let me look what we, if I actually <laughs> changed it. I may not have changed it yet. Let me see. So, well, we'll send out the official. I think that's another thing that's stuck in name limbo with us because we we both are not super great at coming up with names. Maybe Amy's better at it than us. Um, so, um, but that's also a way that we can all kind of keep each other updated. Um, we would love it if you all, you know, sent us pictures to share. Um, not only if you're doing the dill along with us, which would be pretty cool but just whatever you're doing in your garden like it's a it can be a good place to go and get ideas troubleshoot like if like amy said if you're like what is this thing coming up is this a weed or should i save it like that's a, a place that you can go and we can help you all troubleshoot that kind of stuff yeah so i just looked it up and right now it's just casey public library cooking and gardening group but we're going to come up with a better name, so we'll send you the link. Yeah, that's on our list of things to find a better name for. I think it was read it, grow it, eat it, is what we're going to call it. Read it, grow it, eat it. For sure. Oh, we just had a car pull up, and it's the same kind of car I have, so it kind of threw me off for a second. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything or anything related, not related? something cool about your week that you wanted to share with us jenny you know i'm not good with technology but i would sure like to be part of that facebook group i don't even do facebook but I'd like i'm into cooking and gardening and that stuff okay well it's a public group so i think even i don't know if you can see it if you don't have a facebook account 
I'll look into I don't think that. you would be able to interact with it. But when you, but if, you, you set, if you set up a Facebook account, you can set it like the privacy stuff so high that people can't even send you a friend request. Right. No one will know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you could do like a, a, what my husband calls a gnome day tubes, like just a, an internet name that he makes up for stuff. Um, so that nobody can can hunt you down and look at your dill if you don't want them to. Yeah, I think I have a Facebook and account. I just don't really know how to use it. So okay, how will I be able to see like your guys's group? So we'll send you the there. link. We'll send you the link to the group, and then if you just click on that, that'll take you to Facebook. And it may ask you to sign in at that point if you're not okay. signed in, but okay. it should take you right there. And that'll be on email, Jenny, that you'll send me the link. Yeah, I'll send that out. It may be Monday before that goes out, but we'll get that sent out. Thank you. Is this video and all your other Friday videos going to wind up on the Facebook page? I think That's the dream. Yeah. So this is the first one we've actually recorded. Because um, I'm doing this right now technically as the library's intern, not as an extension employee. So when I'm an extension employee mode, we can't record them. But when I'm in library intern mode, we can. So that's why in the past we haven't been recording them. Okay, I look forward to seeing all your videos too. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, we've and been wanting to have a place to, to stream them or show them. So, mm -hmm. well, we have a YouTube channel. And so it'll go there first and then we'll link it onto the Facebook group. Oh, okay. Is that just called Kansas City Public Library? That's it? Yep. YouTube? Okay. Any other questions? Um, I would like to just make one comment. Oh. I would just like to thank Buffalo Seed Company and Amy J from Independence again for providing mm -hmm. all the seed for us to do this program. Yay. And if yes, you don't have your dill you. seed yet, Go to the library and pick up your free dill seed. Yeah, and it comes with a little kind of instruction sheet. And I also have dill for people who need it. Yes, and just a reminder, <laughs> so all of the branches have were sent the dill seed and the flyer for the program. But also a reminder that June 1st, in case you haven't heard, we are reopening the libraries. So we will be back to our normal operation schedules and you'll be able to come in and browse the books again. And um, Amy, I'm not sure if you know what the C library will look like at that point. She's or... talking to somebody. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> she'll talk about that probably next week. We'll ask her to talk about that next week. And all the, just FYI, all of the branches are still going to require patrons and employees to wear their masks. Yes. We are. So be mentally prepared for that. Yes. Do you guys know if the dill seed, how generous to give it to each of the library branches? Is it organic? Do you know? Um... I, I don't know. That's not something that I worry about too much personally. Um, do you have any idea if the Dulcies are organic, the ones that we have to give out? If there were. Organic. Um, we're going to look. At least the we can. I don't know. I have a feeling if you go on the Buffalo Seed Company website, yeah. it will tell you. OK. So it's probably Buffalo Seed company.com or something very similar to that and they're out of uh shawnee okay Kansas. buffalo C. okay so they have like a retail location in shawnee you, i don't know if they have a retail location but you can order online from them that's cool and I, I know that they're all non-gmo they're non-gmo which another thing i don't personally worry about that much but i know it's important to some people um, I mean, I think if it was all organic, they probably would have bragged about it by now on their website. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. How generous. Thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's very nice of them. We appreciate it. I didn't realize that they were so close, like actually in the Kansas City area. I knew they were like Missouri. Yeah. Yep. We've got that. And then we've got Baker Creek is another one that's. It's about like three, three and a half hours from here. And there's several other mm -hmm. 
some smaller ones. What else is weighing on your mind, everyone? I'm gonna check the chat. Oh, it says, thank you, you're welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. I love all this that you guys are doing. So this is every Friday at three? Yeah, yes. every Friday at three. That's and, sweet. and we, so probably through September, it's every every Friday and then we switch to monthly, but when we're really going strong with the garden, then we're, we're every week. Yes. And if anybody has any like requests for um, like certain crops that you really want us to cover, certain gardening styles that you want to know more about, um, you know, definitely feel free to email Jenny and she can pass that on to me or just, you know, shout it out when it pops into your mind when we're doing the, when we're doing the online. I have an idea. Cassaba melon, C-A-S-A-B-A. -A -A. Do you guys ever get cassaba? It always gets confused with cassava with a V, but cassava with a B as in banana. This you know, little C, C-A-B-A? -A? Uh, C-A-S. A B A cassava, because I know the one with the V as in Victor. That's more Ooh. of a different thing, but cassava is like yellow with wrinkles. It's like a Hershey's kiss in the yellow form. I never Ooh. get in the stores. I can't get it. I'm dying for it. Cassava melon, so juicy. Yellow on we the had, outside, off white on the inside. What? We had um last summer the grocery store the sunfresh westport just for like a couple days had these lemon drop melons that i had never seen before and i've never seen them again but they were like melon with like kind of a sweet lemon taste and i need to find those because they were amazing i'm not a super like melon enthusiast but i thought these were amazing yeah, I think mel melons are kind of hard. I tried to grow watermelon once. They take so much water and everything else. Yeah. I wound we, up with like mutants with no flavor, twisted like the letter C, you know? I did some in one of my gardens successfully some watermelon last year, but um, every all of that kind of stuff in my yard got eaten by the big fat gopher that lives underneath my neighbor's shed. Or he's a groundhog. I don't know those might be the same thing. Terrible. But you guys, if you've been hanging out with us for a while, you know about the big boy groundhog that lives yes. under my neighbor's shed. And yes, I still need to go through my plans to make him a little um, groundhog picnic table that I can put sacrificial produce on this summer. There's some <laughs> video I saw on YouTube of a guy that has some groundhogs living near his garden. He just created their own garden for them. And he is that the I think you sent me that and <laughs> I've been following his Instagram. I don't know what it's called, no. but it's pretty cute. It's funny. Well, it's 3.30. Hey. Anything hey. else, y'all? Are we ready to weekend? Ready to weekend. Maybe sometime you could cover garlic, growing garlic. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Amy's making a very excited face. And yes, so we can do that. Um, we plant, you plant it like closer to November here in Kansas City um, because you really don't want it to be doing much growing before um, like the next spring. So when we get closer, we can, I mean, we can talk about garlic anytime you want, but um, in like November, we can do some actual demonstrations. Yeah, maybe like towards late summer, we can just do a, a lesson on it so everyone can kind of get prepared for what they'll be Yeah, doing. absolutely. And so even in the greenhouse, like don't don't be planting it now. Wait for the fall. Yeah, because it needs that overwintering, like in the cold ground, um, in order to spring forth into a garlic correctly. I think if you put it in the gar in the greenhouse now, you would maybe get like some garlic shoots out of it, which are delicious. So there's definitely nothing wrong with doing that. But I don't think you're gonna make like a whole another garlic cluster right. until you plant it in the because you plant it in the fall um basically it's like the opposite of everything else it's like after the danger of the soil warming up too much has passed then you plant your garlic and then it's not ready to harvest until like late june early july i believe 
So yeah, it's kind of like the opposite of almost everything else. Yeah. Okay. If, it's, if so it much. starts to sprout and then it gets really cold, then it can kill the whole thing off. But I will, I will do that with you, Amy, this fall. I've been wanting to do garlic. So we can learn together. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'm getting rained on, so. Okay, I was worried that that was going to happen. <laughs> Bye, <today>. guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for joining us. And we will see you next Friday at 3 o'clock Central Time. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, all we get is rain here in Kansas City right now. So hopefully we will have a drier week coming up. I'm hoping. Um, Yay. We'll thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jenny Starr. Thanks. Great. Thanks, thanks for being in the rain for us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you all. Thank you.